Hey tarot friends, it's Dustin from Modern Metaphysique, and today I thought we could hang out and take a trip through the William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination, the illuminated third edition by Ed Burren. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this deck for yourself, you can find a link to where to grab one down in the description box below. Down there you'll also find links to my personal website where you can book a tarot reading with me or even purchase some of my own handmade metaphysical goods, which is the best way to help support the channel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and be sure to subscribe and click that little bell notification button so that you don't miss any future videos, and be sure to leave a comment at the end of the video and let me know what you think about this deck. So let's dive in. As I mentioned, this is the third edition. The previous edition, the second edition, was independently produced by Ed himself. Um, we will take a look at the differences between the two a little bit later in the video. But uh, yeah, this is the newest edition being produced by Schiffer Red Feather. If you're unfamiliar with William Blake, this deck is basically a, uh, a deck created by Ed in a slightly collaged fashion um, of his artwork, basically from a lot of the artwork that he was commissioned to do, as well as his, uh, his own artwork that he did alongside a lot of his poetry, which is really fantastic. Um, William Blake was quite the eccentric, one might say. He was a little bit of a renaissance man. He lived um, basically in the 18th and early 19th century, and he really is largely unrecognized during his time. He was a poet, he was a painter, he was a printmaker, but people were not overly fond of him and his ideas. They were considered a little radical and a little um, off the norm because during this period we're talking about the Enlightenment, right? So there was a heavy emphasis on science and reasoning, logic, and reproducing the natural world in art in a very realistic fashion. And obviously when you're depicting things like angels and God, um, that's, that's a little <laughs> counter to what everybody else is doing. So he wasn't very popular during his own lifetime. And he was very certainly a hermit, uh, for lack of better words. There is a quote that I remember being shown to me in art history class in my undergraduate studies that I think per is a perfect descriptor of the kind of person that Blake was. And I want to read that to you. And this is from a letter that he sent to one of his friends when he moved back to London. So the quote is, and I quote, that I can alone carry on my visionary studies in London unannoyed, and that I may converse with my friends in eternity, see visions, dream dreams, and prophecy and speak parables unobserved, and at liberty from the doubts of other mortals. So, he is, um, he is a character, for sure, but his work is absolutely amazing and i think you know today he's definitely getting the credit that he was due um this is probably one of his most well-known pieces this is a piece called the ancient of days here on the cover of the tarot deck uh, it depicts god basically holding uh, the compass and being the grand architect of the world now uh, the the other thing that he's probably most well known for and um, how i was originally introduced to him back in high school is his work illustrating uh, Dante's Divine Com Comedy. And unfortunately, he didn't finish the whole work for that. Um, he passed away before he could finish it all. But there are a lot of editions of Dante's work that include his illustrations these days. Um, but he is a fascinating, absolutely fascinating character. And when I found out that there was a tarot deck based on his artwork, I had to scoop it up because I love William Blake. Um, I'm absolutely always fascinated and entranced by his work and his poetry. And I was really excited to see that this deck was getting uh, a third edition. And this third edition is a little different from the previous ones. So let's dive into it now that we're done with our little mini art history lesson. <laughs> um, the deck itself comes in a really lovely hardcover box. Uh, I have really no complaints about this. It's really great. It's got a nice little description on the back. You can pause and read that if you'd like. 
the uh, closure is just this little magnetic flap, which is lovely, and inside is also decorated very, very well done. And you get this nice little piece by William Blake, and this is from a lot of his poetry works were illustrated, and uh, the writing of his poetry was not typeset, it was uh, hand-done calligraphy, which is really wonderful. And this piece reads, Time is the <clears throat> mercy of eternity. Without time's swiftness, which is the swiftest of all things, all were eternal torment. So I just love that that's included there. So you get a nice little lift ribbon here to pull the deck and the guidebook out. Um, so yeah, no complaints about the box. The box is great. Take note, <laughs> companies who don't do boxes like this. All right, now, you do get a nice little guidebook with this, which I think is really lovely. Um, it's full color, which is great. You get great little descriptions of the cards. My favorite thing about this guidebook is that you get these little blurbs underneath each of the cards that talk about the card in reference to the creative process, which is wonderful. So if you, if you use tarot for creative writing or for inspiration for painting or whatever, uh, you know, the, the guidebook is set up in a way to really support that as well, which I think is fantastic. Um, you do get some nice little blurbs about the deck and the artists, uh, sorry, the creator's sort of thesis behind creating this deck. And I think the description that Ed writes here is way better a synopsis than anything else I could have ever put it together. So I'm going to read this for you. The William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination is a collaged full color deck illustrated with the visionary art of William Blake, mystical painter, poet, mythologizer, and proto psychologist, which I think is a really great way of describing Blake. Although Blake lived 250 years ago, his spiritual art and ideas remain totally relevant to our own time. This 79 card deck presents Blake's central thesis that human creative imagination is the divine aspect of mankind. The Blake Tarot, radical yet classical, offers a powerful tool for stimulating creativity and spiritual growth and a unique way to learn more about Blake and his spiritual, spiritually revolutionary ideas, um, which I think is great. And he, he was very revolutionary and he, uh, and you'll, you'll see that through, throughout his artwork. Um, I think today he may have been even considered a little, a little crazy, maybe, um, you know, he, some of the more well-known biographical facts about him was that he uh, saw the face of God in his window at the age of four, which just terrified him. Um, you know, and he devoutly read the Bible after that. He often had visions of angels and other spiritual beings and things like that. And so you can see a lot of, you know, his philosophy and his spirituality come through in a lot of these artworks. And he was very against organized religion, interestingly enough, um, very against the Church of England. Um, and he, he was a radical for his time. So yeah, let's talk about the deck itself. Uh, as you can see, the cards are quite large in comparison to a standard tarot card. Um, they're quite a bit wider and a little bit taller. The cardstock itself is really nice. It's a nice matte finished cardstock. Um, so no complaints there. The backs are reversible. You have some angelic illustrations here done by Blake. And the sides of the deck are gilt in a nice metallic gilding. It is that kind that will kind of like crack and wear nicely. It's not the kind that like rubs off or makes your hands all glittery, which is my preference. Although the sort of matte gilding is still always my favorite. And the cards are really well done. Um, they're beautifully printed and you can see some really wonderful details. So before we dive into all of the, the criticisms and critiques, let's do our walk through and flip through and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the deck and what I love about it what some of my criticisms are and also compare it to a previous edition so you can see some of the differences so this is the William Blake Tarot of Creative Imagination by Ed Burren
so that is the William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination by Ed Byrne, third edition, published by Schiffer Redfeather. It's a really beautifully well-produced deck, and I'm really happy to see that it is back in print and easily accessible again. Um, now, I'm sure most of you noticed that this deck is loosely based on the RWS. Um, however, a lot of the titles in the Major Arcana have been modified, and the suits themselves obviously are the four creative suits. So you have painting for cups, you have uh, science for swords or air, you have music for wands or fire, and then you have poetry for pentacles or earth. Um, so it does definitely have uh, a more standard tarot structure, but it really kind of is its own thing. Um, the courts themselves are kind of their own thing. You have an angel, a um, an angel, a child, a woman, and a man. So that's a little different. But the guidebook does a great job of explaining all of those things. I wouldn't say that this is a great deck for beginners, um, but if you're a huge fan of William Blake or um, a lot of his philosophies and things like that, I think this is a, a great deck, and especially if you're someone who's a creative person. I love, love, love doing creative readings for myself with this when I'm like working on a painting or if I'm just stuck in a creative rut or whatever the scenario may be. Um, I love working with this deck in that sort of context. Now, you probably also noticed that there is a double zero card, so this is an additional Major Arcana card, uh, which is Eternity, which I love. And um, you can see in a lot of the cards where the collage is, right? So these are a few pieces of William Blake that Ed has kind of collaged together in this, um, this piece to really make it feel like a tarot card, right? So it's not quite just all William Blake. It's a very collaborative kind of work, which I love. But some of them are a little more directly from William Blake as the Emperor card, or in this case, Reason is. Um, you know, you have the Ancient of Days. Now, I'm sure a lot of you also noticed that there are keywords on a lot of the, mi the minor cards. Um, I liked a lot of the minor card keywords. There's only a few that kind of made me raise an eyebrow, but anytime I found myself questioning it or being like, what, why, why this? Um, I turned to the guidebook and the guidebook gave a really great description and clarified it and it made total sense in the context. So if you're looking for a strict RWS clone, this is probably not something that you're gonna love. Um, but if you come to it with an open mind, I think it's something you'll really enjoy working with. I mean, I love the artwork in this. It's really well done. And the thing that I think I love the most is that Ed drew a lot from the poetry workings of Blake, which you can see a lot in um, the music and the poetry suits. And when you see Blake's poetry, he always did these really beautiful illustrations, and then he also hand <coughs> wrote all of his poems in really nice calligraphy. And this these two suits are my favorite because you get a lot of those works and you get the poem as well um, as the artwork. So I love the inclusion of those in this deck. Um, now, as far as the, let's see, the, the differences between this edition and the previous version, um, Ed does give a really great sort of description in the guidebook which says earlier editions of this deck were based on reproductions from which the cards are derived. However, the inherent energy of Blake's art eventually seemed dulled for tarot use by time, faded colors, and indistinct details of these reproductions. I wanted a brighter, clearer edition specifically for tarot use, not just a miniature gallery of art. So he went for a, much, a much more contrasting um, version of the cards in this edition than the other ones. Um, and we'll, 
I'm going to pull out the second edition here and you guys can kind of see the difference. Um, and these ones are always tricky. Oh, there we go. We got it open. If you ever have a hard time opening tuck boxes, by the way, the best way to do that, to open this without like ripping the crap out of it is to grab like a pair of scissors or something and just gently slide the scissors underneath the lid of the tuck box and turn it and it will open right up. So this is the second edition version of the deck. Now, now, now we get into some of the criticisms. So I'm sure you can see right off the bat, there is uh, a difference in coloration. So there's quite a bit more color in the third edition compared to the second edition. There's also some instances in some of the cards, and I'm not gonna do like a full side-by-side. -side. If that's something that you guys are interested in, let me know in the comment section and maybe I can do that. Um, but you can see that you definitely are getting a much more saturated, colorful version of the pictures. There's also been some more work done to the art to clean up some of the details, right? So you don't see as many of the stairs in the second edition as you do in the third. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, <laughs> I prefer the artwork in the second edition over the third. I like the contrast more in the third, but I feel there's more detail in the second edition because I think in cleaning up a lot of the artwork, they lost some of the detail in the third, but that's okay. They're both really well done um, and they're both really beautiful. And obviously this is gonna be the most accessible thing. Um, but I will say, like, for you can really tell the difference, like, here in the Fool card. Um, I just, you really get the sense of the print, right? That engraving quality going on in the background, which they just kind of got rid of in this. They did make the sunbeams a lot brighter, right? You can see that. But, um, and they obviously made the sky a lot more clear. I'm not sure why that choice was made. But like, if I were to pick which one I prefer, it's this one. The other thing I found really odd, really odd about this this third edition is they went through and added nipples to a lot of the work, which I don't I don't know why. Um, and it's like a lot of them are like just these bright red nipples. You can see it on some of the other cards, but it's just a really odd choice. So I was kind of disappointed by that. But otherwise, those are really my only complaints about the changes. There's no significant, like, compositional changes or, like, complete art swaps. So, really, it's, you know, it's the same thing, just slightly different treatments. Like, you can see here, they chose brighter colors. You know, the, the water here is a lot brighter. Um, you know, they just kind of cleaned up some things and lines and, and made it a little bit less m muddy and murky. But I think that like muddy murky quality is what makes Blake's work really shine. Um, but I do understand in terms of Ed's decision to make these changes to make it more of a tarot reading deck instead of just an art, like an art gallery deck, which uh, obviously me as an art snob <laughs> is gonna prefer right you can really again see the difference here in the ancient of days like this one feels so much more artistic um and this one just feels very flat so those are really my only biggest complaints um like i said the keywords i i'm fine with i really don't read with this deck like a standard RWS or Thoth based deck, I, I really kind of treat it as its own thing in its own system. Um, and that's the way I approached it from the beginning of working with this deck. So, you know, I think that really helped me kind of overcome any hiccups that I had with some of the, um, the keyword choices, right? Again, like you can see they added the nipples. Um, wait, why? Just why? I don't know why. <laughs> Someone's gonna quote me and there's gonna be a timestamp again, right? See, we we added the nipples. <laughs> it's just such an odd choice to make. Um, I, I mean, I do like some of the coloration changes, but again, I think it, it does shift the artwork and some of the meaning, right, behind it. 
because color color has meaning in certain scenarios though they stay true to the color palette right and you can see here it's just a much more vibrant version of uh, the second edition which is nice I think a happy medium between these two would have been something that I personally preferred but again you know if this if you love William Blake and you know you love tarot like I do um, I definitely would check this one out oh and i will say too um i was really glad to see that they doubled the backs to make them reversible because the second edition wasn't um, and you can see that the backs are much more saturated as well and obviously the size of the card is a little bit larger the cardstock on the second edition is um more of a glossy thinner cardstock and this is a nice thick cardstock and the second edition also is not gilt just for comparisons so yeah i i love the artwork in this deck so very much i think ed did a fantastic job of paying homage to william blake and his sort of creative thesis that he presents in his um art while aligning it with the tarot um yeah i just love it Again here, like this, this just feels, they almost look jaundice because they're so yellow now. I still prefer, and this, this almost doesn't feel like night anymore because the sky is so blue. Like, I, I still prefer this. But I do like this one a little bit better, right? It's a little, it's a little more colorful. It's a little more clear. So, it's one of those half dozen in one hand six in the other kind of things but you can definitely see the difference in how they treated the art in both cards there's also some slight differences in some of the borders and things like that as you go through the deck um, and how those were treated you can see that in a lot of cases this like bottom piece that exists along with the art that sometimes there is writing in let me see if i can find a good example for you guys um i think it's in the yeah in the poetry ones there's like this writing in it they just kind of moved the title up which is fine i like it it's all right so let's those are some of the the slight things but you can see like there's there's not a whole lot of differences in the composition or anything like that it's really just color saturation and uh, detail that they've kind of altered but yeah I love this deck um, I love William Blake I love working with this deck like I said especially for creative kinds of readings when I have a creative block and I really just can't seem to um, move past something i will i will pull this deck out and i will read with it specifically for that reason um if you're interested like i said in grabbing a copy of this deck you can find the link down below don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this deck for yourself and yeah thank you for coming and hanging out with me and checking out the new edition of the william blake tarot by ed burren as always remember everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about so be kind. Take care, everybody.